Hello everyone and welcome back to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This is episode 21. Last time we went back to the reactor with the girls and we got to fight Scarlet in her Crimson Mare Mark II. Uh, we witnessed some pretty crazy story events play out in regards to Genova's manipulation on Cloud here, trying to get him and Tifa at odds with each other. A significant rift between them. But what's really great is Tifa and Cloud's bond is too strong. She's worried about his potential cellular de degradation as soldier, and so is he where he talks about things he has no right knowing and uh, like the the way that he's, he feels like he's got multiple people inside of him, just an amazingly delivered scene of his struggle here. And his group does care and does worry about what's going on with him. Uh, they're just unfortunately in a situation where they need his expertise to always be at like the top of the game to lead the group. But they're like, please don't go crazy, man. <laughs> we need you. Uh, we're continuing our adventures through the Gongaga region, uh, where I have completed uh, most of the additional objectives here to complete the region. We just have the battle intel to complete, as well as the proto relic. So we're going to be jumping into that one now uh, before we head to the airstrip. So let's get right into it. Before we proceed, we did pick up the world intel, the final piece for the Gongaga region. So we've got the first generation Marco reactors based on the one built in Nebel are prone to malfunction due to flaws in the pressurization system's design. This, however, did not deter Shinra from installing them at various locations throughout the world, including Gongaga. So the one in Mount Nebel did have some issues, but it was the only one supervised by R&D, and it seems to be without explosion incident at the very least. The company's failure to follow their own inspection and maintenance procedures led to a disastrous explosion which claimed the lives of many villagers. Acknowledging its part in the incident, Shinra dedicated a monument to the victims. The accident was not an isolated occurrence though, at least one other reactor is known to have exploded in a similar fashion. Stranger yet, Shinra has been investigating alleged sightings of gigantic lifeforms known as weapons near the remains of these destroyed Marco reactors. So there you go, there's our two weapons at two destroyed reactors. Just Shinra having a very different response to the two locations, which is wild to me. All right, we got a Grand Horn Warden. All right. We got a red version. Keep it together. All set, you're up. Yes, it's my turn. Okay, as Barrett's about to get charged by one. A rare Grand Horn variant that grew skilled in battle in order to protect its community. The liquid it secretes from its claws dulls its enemy's movements. Attacking it twice while it's guarding will cause it to counterattack, hitting it with powerful offensive abilities while it's guarding or counterattacking will pressure it, though only ranged attacks are effective while it's counterattacking. There you go. We should have uh, used an ether before all of this. Waiting for them to guard so Barrett can use strong abilities, but they seem to just be standing there menacingly. Now. 
We never got to pressure it, unfortunately, because I was waiting for it to block so Barrett could focus shot. But that's okay. That was an impressive showing. So impressive, I was able to devise a new combat trial for you. And I was in charge of calibrating the difficulty level. Look, they're getting along now. All right, let's get this pressure. We'll just attack it with Cloud instead. It does the job. Need a breather. I got it. Pay Finish him off. There you go. Easy pressure. Alright, there's one of our world intels completed for combat. On to the next spot. Alright, we've got a, another Grand Horn. Savage Grand Horn. Take the lead. I assume it'll get pressured the same way. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, it gets pressured the same way. A bipedal creature found deep within the jungles of Gongaga. Overexposure to Marco from the nearby reactor has brought out a bestial ferocity in it. It controls plants to restrain its prey. It periodically restrains a target with Earthbound, but these binds can be broken by staggering the creature. Attacking it twice while it's guarding will cause it to counterattack, although its guard will reflect ranged attacks this time, and it didn't with the previous fight. Hitting it with powerful abilities will pressure it. Oh, so it's not even hitting it while guarding, it's just hitting it with powerful abilities. There you go. Alright, a bit different this time. Here's Earthbound. Okay. Cloud just being like, let go. Okay, so we gotta get we gotta get the stagger. Okay, Tifa's just gonna keep getting whacked. There you go, there's the stagger. Cloud should be free now. Don't earthbound cloud again, you bastard. Okay. I got 30 more seconds, dude. What the fuck? I did the wrong ability. I was supposed to do focus shot. Um. Come on, finish, finish, finish. Take him down. Oh, 
with a one second to go. <laughs> okay. There you go. Maddens my Marco. Cool Grant on fight. Okay. We've got a uh, the Sultan of Stench, which is the a great name for what I am hoping and assuming is the Malboro, because you don't have a bad breath type enemy and have it not be a Malboro, which is very exciting. And we also have a crafting item in the transmute menu, which is in relation to a Malboro. So it definitely lets you know. Reactor royalty, there we go. Let's take him on. Fulvum Varanus. Oh my god. Okay. Jesus. Let's see what they're all about. Rare Gagigandi variants that hatch nearby the Gongaga reactor. They grow into maturity at a pre preternatural rate and are possessed with strength far superior to that of the average Gagandi. Gagigandi. Gagigandi. It's so hard to just say off the cuff. Hitting them with powerful offensive abilities will pressure them. Okay. So I'm going to wait while they do that ambush and smack them. I thought that would get the pressure. I just missed the opportunity, I think. Maybe Barrett's focus shot just isn't powerful enough. I do like having unique variants of the normal enemies. It does make for some cool fights with their more unique abilities sometimes, like the previous Grand Horn. Whoa, a considerable amount of data on fiends. Allow me to express my gratitude on Chadley's behalf. And Maya must insist that you not put words in my mouth. Here's a new combat trial. Wonderful. We'll see what rewards we can get today. I think it's it kind of speaks volumes about um, the amount of fun combat trials you get. Like, you get, like, go do this combat and then you can go and get new combat and get, unlock powerful materia. And it's all just, it all just works so well with each other. Ooh. M Malisaros. A lesser rust nearby. This is kind of okay. Wow. Hello. Okay. Now I said earlier, um, an enemy that I was really hoping for was the 
uh, a dinosaur on wheels, you know? <laughs> and this isn't a dinosaur on wheels, but it's got the, uh, it's got the horns like it used to. Okay, that's it. Large herbivorous beasts found in forested regions. And the Triceratops on wheels was also a herbivore, guys. Come on, you could have given it to us here. True tanks of the animal kingdom. They boast thick hide, sturdy muscles, and two giant horns. I think this is our replacement. The way that it's like a large herbivorous beast, and it says it's a true tank. In the original game, you've got like a Triceratops on a tank tread. Like, it's this weird Shinra creation monster. And I was really hoping that they would still stick it in this game. You know, if you can have Hell House, you can have a Triceratops on wheels. <laughs> Automatically become pressured after using certain attacks. They will begin to heal themselves with Concentrate when their stagger gauge gets high, but this can be interrupted by hitting them with two powerful offensive abilities. Okay, two abilities. Does not get uh, pressured for long. The sheer amount of items that we get to use without uh, spending an ATB gauge is great. I really like that for the item materials that you can have. You can have Item Master increasing its uh, efficacy, and then you can also have the Item Economizer, which is very good too. Alright, here's Concentrate. And interrupted enemy, there we go. That's why I was saving up Cloud's ATB gauges. And weak against fire. Now's our chance. Strike hard Very good. Two pronged assault. And that's our rare fiend data completed. You've completed all battle assignments within Gongaga. I've added a new trial to the simulator. Distant Tremors. Chadley says that she'll tweak my AI. Please do. Okay, so new combat simulator added. We can now take on the Sultan of Stench. So I think we should be able to just get into that zone from here. I love how many iconic enemies are found uh, in the form of these special fights. I was hoping that we would have the Triceratops tank, <laughs> as I said, as one of those special fights on par with the Hell House. But it's okay. A Malboro is even more iconic. We love our Malboros. Okay. We just have to be prepared for status ailments. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Barrett still for long range and we're going to focus on basically all of the things that we have that will grant immunities to things we've got immunity to chode petrify and stone poison sleep slow and stop silence slow and instant death i just don't know I guess, like, Bad Breath is going to hit us with absolutely everything. <laughs> so it is wondering what we're going to be doing. Alright, we've made it to the Sultan of Stench. I was thinking of giving ourselves accessories that would reduce bad status effects, but we might be okay. Alright, we have a high risk level here. <laughs> level 38. Great Malboro. We haven't even faced off against a normal Malboro. Here we go. It's just like the one on the card that we have. <laughs> okay. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's make it. 
These grotesque fiends live in Gongaga's jungles and boast countless tentacles springing from their heads. From their giant maws, they spew corrosive liquid and the most acrid of breath. Exposure to Marco has made them bigger, uglier, and stinkier. Shattering the mouth will make them susceptible to staggering and prevent them from using bad breath. If left unchecked, Bad Breath will steadily increase in potency. Its mouth will regenerate after a certain amount of time. So you're gonna shatter the mouth. Okay. Amazing. And there's our first Bad Breath instance. Keep your distance. Okay, I made sure... Oh, there, you attack the mouth. Okay, I see. Hang on. There's an actual specific target for the mouth. Oh, and it's only while Bad Breath is active. Gotcha. Understandable. Putrid breath. That's even worse. Okay. Okay, so now we can attack it specifically. The fetid mouth. Bundle up. There you go. Oh, I got caught in the breath. So Cloud and Tifa got everything. Gotcha. Hope you don't mind if I fill you for the hole. Okay. Take a little second before I get everybody up and ready again. Uh, where are my remedies? I have less memories, uh, remedies than I thought that I did. AKA none? Okay, I've got... <laughs> Jesus. I thought that I had a remedy. Okay. Barrett can just survive for now. Fuck on this. Test by Rank Mouth. Okay, it's now eating Tifa. When will Cloud come back? Cloud, come back. Damn. We did not get the mouth in time. Almost have stagger. Okay. Okay, Cloud's back. <laughs> God. Um, where's Tifa? Bring, give me Tifa back, please. Call the night. Fetid haze. Oh God. Okay. Oh no. Get out of there. Okay. Oh no. Get out of there. Get out of there, Cloud. Hang on. Gotta be careful. There you go. Crippled the mouth. Oh man. Um. <laughs> Yep. I'm sure. Okay. We're doing Phoenix. You're up. I'm trying to heal my poison, but <laughs> I'm stressed. Phoenix, heal the party, please. Oh, Cloud. Okay. Okay. Oh, actually. I've got to cripple the mouth. Got to cripple the mouth first. 
Oh no! It didn't work? Dude. Maybe I should have used Blizzard from a distance. Alright. Rebirth Flame. Okay, Cloud's still dead. Get the win, please. There we go. <laughs> yep. Boop. Oh, that, that wasn't even the finishing blow. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm covered in poison. Oh my god. Thanks, Barrett. Tifa was just removed from the whole party. I was wondering if uh, shattering the mouth would bring her back. Your victory was inspiring, Cloud. The Maladorous monstrosity has been sent back to the jungle depths from whence it came. That's a considerably rare material, Cloud. I suspect it'll prove useful in crafting new creations. I suspect you hold on to it. There you go. Malboro done, which leaves only the Proto Relic now. Um, that bad breath, huh? So we have the ability to do a Malboro Orb, which extends the duration of detrimental status effects applied to foes, reduces duration of status effects inflicted on the wearer, which is very nice. Um, well, we got to use the Great Malboro Tendril for something, so I'm pretty sure it's that. There you go. Lovely. Uh, now let's get ourselves to a rest point, and then we can go and do the Proto Relic. Ah, the training facility VB. Cloud, wait a second. Security is still active, but I should be able to disable it remotely. One moment. There appears to be a Shinra tra training facility, one of several in the region. Out here in Gungaga? That's news to me. The official records were curated to remove all mention of them some time ago. They were last used by General Affairs Auditing. The Turks. Ooh. I've created fake IDs for all of you. Now shall we see what awaits us inside? Shinra training facility last used by the Turks. We now have fake uh, Shinra IDs. <laughs> Interesting. The Proto Relic missions are so fun in what they add to the world of this game, I think. I mean, Kid G and his cactuars, maybe not. <laughs> but Turks training facility? Sounds good. It's dark in here. ID GAI 224. Uh. Affiliation General Affairs Auditing Subclassification Turks. Welcome to the Turks Training Facility. Zung! As you well know, our duties often require that we enter into high risk situations. Failure is tantamount to death. Even here, act as though your lives are on the line. Without further ado, I'll brief you on your mission. Calm's Bailey has been breached by armed insurgents, allowing hordes of fiends to overrun the town. Your military is on site. The enemy is utilizing the chaos to establish a foothold. Our mission is to pinpoint their leader's location and apprehend him as soon as possible. This exercise will begin as soon as you are ready. Good luck. Avalanche insurgents? <laughs> they were faint at best, but I did pick up proto-relic readings during that mission briefing just now. So, in other words? In other words, to secure it, you need only lay waste to your simulated enemies. Okay, how is Gilgamesh going to factor into these? Turks training. Complete VR missions at the Turks' various training facilities to extract the encrypted proto-relic data. Each mission will utilize your current party. Okay. Very good indeed. Complete the training exercise. Initiating training mission. Shinra Combat Simulator. <laughs> Let's see. Be sighted. Attention all units. 
Engage the monster threat. You know what would be nice? If the training missions were fighting against the Turks. <laughs> That'd be so much fun. Do training missions by going up against your companions, the Turks. <laughs> Requesting backup. Oh god, they're giving us uh, the variants. Okay. Damn. That's nice. No. Try this. Slain's Wolf and the... Oh, okay. Let's see. We got the Thunderclaw as well. Detrimental status effects on them. Hmm. that almost killed in one blow with the synergy ability. Insertion arrested. Your leader is in custody. Damn it all. I'll escort him to HQ. Very good work today, partner. Mission complete. Excellent performance. You'll serve us well in the field. The insurgent leader became radicalized against Shinra following an incident roughly eight years ago. He believes his home was stolen from him. There are many who hold grudges against the company, and it is our job to remove these seeds of trouble before they take root. This facility will enter power saving mode. Once you have retrieved your provisions, proceed to the next location. I've made an incredible discovery! Whoa! That the proto-relic? While the image is still quite unstable, the implication is staggering. The proto-relic has been digitized and stored within the simulation. Can we get it out? Without more data, I can't say for certain. Let's head to the next facility. I'll continue my analysis there. I just find it funny just uh, 
being one of the Turks and like listening to this. I can imagine Elena in this training facility, but Reno and Rude having this stuff said to them is funny. Imagine like Rude comes here to train and it's just What's Rude talking to himself. Removing the seeds of trouble. They really have no idea, do they? It's Shinra's own fault everyone hates them. What goes around comes around. As it should. I guess, but the problem is that not everyone in Shinra is bad. A lot of them are actually good people. You call them good people. Well, I call them enablers. They're why Shinra keeps getting away with it. I mean, I see where you're coming from. You do, huh? Glad I could be of service. Both perspectives have validity. Three missed mega potions. Very nice. Okay. Time to head to the next location all the way up this way. Arrival of objective confirmed. I've disabled the security system. You may use our fake IDs to enter the facility. Okay. I wonder if the Turks register logins. <laughs> and they're like, who's using our facilities at this hour? So, I assume that the Proto-Relic Turks missions is their way of sort of interjecting a little bit of Turks presence into this section of the game. Because in the original, you do have a little bit of a brief encounter with the Turks right before Gongaga Village. I'm hoping to see Reno in one of these holograms. I assume we've got, we've got Song and Rude. Maybe we'll see Elena. Maybe we'll see someone else. Who knows, but Reno would be very nice. Vision, you repelled an insurgent attack and captured the enemy's leader. As a Turk in the field, you must be capable of assessing a situation and making sound judgments. Now then, what should be done with him? What's interesting about this is that it's asking us from a Shinra Turks perspective, right? <laughs> Um, we will go for interrogation. I just wonder whether you're supposed to be answering this genuinely or not. I love video game dialogue choices. I assume that Elena wouldn't be one of the VR holograms because if there was going to be anyone who'd be receiving this training, it would be her. So she, it's probably just going to be Song and Rude. Correct. Considering what we know of the situation, it seems unlikely that the insurgents' ultimate objective was the town's occupation. Which leaves us with some questions. Ones only our detainee can answer. What? Why? I'll spare you the details. A productive interrogation revealed to us the truth. The attack on Kong was only intended to be a diversion. One which drew us away from their real target, Junon's weapon system. Suffice it to say, their plan worked. Consequently, they have seized control of our autonomous sentry unit. Your mission is to neutralize the mechanical threat. Best of luck to you out there. All right, we've got a mechanical threat. So their mechs were hijacked and turned against them? <laughs> Sucks to be them. It's a core tenet of the Turks' doctrine that one must anticipate and prepare for every contingency. Yeah. They're never caught flat-footed, that's for sure. All right, so if we're going up against mechanical enemies, I think we'll switch to Yuffie and Kate Sith for this party. And I want Yuffie to have... Yeah, Yuffie's still got her elemental lightning. a good setup.
unit sighted. They know you're oh, coming. Oh, no. The rest is up to you. Elena is in this one. Okay. Huh. That is actually surprising to me. I didn't expect that. I was like, Elena would be the training that this is, you know, meant for. That's not. Constant missile barrage and shielding and everything that comes out of the death wheels is a lot. <laughs> Jesus Christ. enemies stand no chance. <laughs> well, you certainly showed them. Hey, tell you what, I'll report back to some. You and Rude should take the night off. You deserve it. Talking to Reno. Mission complete. Rude and Reno. While your efforts were passable, remember that we set a high bar. Nothing less than perfection. The company's armed forces are, without question, the world's greatest military power. However, our superior strength could well prove our undoing if our enemies succeeded in turning assets against us. We must deny them the opportunity, and if we fail, we must rectify the situation. This facility will enter power-saving mode. Once you have retrieved your provisions, proceed to the next location. Thank you for your excellent work. My analysis is progressing smoothly. We require more what? data. Just a little more. Two more, in fact. Four proto relic missions in total. Okay, facility WT. Okay. Mm. Talk about a pain in the butt. Combat simulator thingy of theirs is supposed to be able to do anything, right? Why do they need more than one? 
I do they need more than one? Previously, each unit had a facility reserved for them alone, but as an energy saving measure, they can now only be used one at a time and in order. One at a one time. One at a time. Skates. So this one would have been Reno's facility originally. The other one may have potentially been Elena's. And then maybe Rude's will be the next one. But there's four in total. Song's training facility, huh? Does that mean we'll get a Reno hologram? Alright, looks like we're heading up this way. Let's dispense with the formalities. For your next mission, you'll be my bodyguards. Huh. Oh, it's Rufus. That's actual a surprise. Not that I had need of any, but no matter how much I protest, this one never listens. Hostile forces have infiltrated Juna and disguised themselves as allies. We must take care to discern friend from foe and ensure no harm comes to the president while waiting for helicopter extraction. Make us proud, Trainee. Oh! Can I be a bad guy? Shall we? Sure. Just watch who you're shooting, okay? This is fun. Protect Rufus, even though he has this incredible guard dog and the most insane coin shooting ability out of his gun ever. I'm wondering if we'll get a Rufus rematch. His fight in remake was just insanity. All right, we'll go for Aerith and Red this time. Vanguard's advancing on your position. Be ready to intercept. Hey! You are get I'll holding back. I'm ready, whatever. No escape, it's on now. I held them off for as long as I could, but there's just too many. They're all yours now. I thought we were actually going to have, uh, like, Rufus here, and we'd have to protect him from taking damage or something, you know? Guys mean business. We'll get there as fast as we can. Just try to hang on till then, okay? Can we just say that like red 13 is insane, dude? <laughs> like <laughs> not only is red insane, but just like 
all of the characters in general just have such a crazy um, array of abilities here. Just so wild. They did justice to Red, Yuffie, and Kate Sith so much. And none the worse for wear. This way, Mr. President. Right. A stellar performance. You've earned a bonus. Hmm. Whatever you desire, just ask, and it's yours. Mission complete. Our president is the heart of the company. He cannot be replaced. It is vital that we keep him from harm, even if it costs us our lives. Keep that in mind on future missions. This facility will enter power saving mode. Once you have retrieved your provisions, proceed to the next location. Something that I would have liked that I think would have been awesome is uh, if they had the original president, right? All right then, let's do it to it. The sooner we finish this thing, the sooner we can show them what we're really capable of. So they have it as like Rufus is already the president. So they've updated the, tra the training facilities really quickly. They're like, all right, we've got to make sure that we update these because Rufus is in now. And obviously Elena's here as well. Uh, but I would love it if there was like an element of it that was a little bit older and it was a way to have the original Shinra president have uh, a cameo here and you're protecting him instead. That would be pretty cool. Maybe you could even have another certain individual from years past who used to work for the Turks as a, uh, as a hologram here as well. And everyone would be like, who's that weird guy? Who's that emo? <laughs> Alright, the final training facility. At least we're not putting a pause on this one like with Kid G. Hey, what gives? <sighs> Your final mission is to snuff out the rogue pair that betrayed our organization. What? Two former Turks. Rude and Elena have kidnapped the president whom they were tasked to protect. Dude, boss fight? Traitors are to be afforded no mercy. Their lives are forfeit. Naturally, the two of them know Turk's policy and will fight to the death. Kill or be killed. These are the only possible outcomes of any confrontation. Here's hoping you survive. Okay. But aren't they friends? How can they go from BFFs to <laughs> shoot to kill just like that? Probably got to be pretty ruthless to make it as a Turk. Oh, Yuffie. Uh, this is great. So we get to fight Rude and Elena again. Oh, this is the perfect opportunity that you could have had the Rude and Reno fight in the Gongaga region recreated here in VR. And just don't have Reno say any lines, you know? Because like I said in an earlier episode about the Japanese voice actor and how he's got a heavily reduced role in this game because of it, just have him be a silent character, but have him be in the fight and just reuse his like, you know, his battle grunt noises from Remake or something, you know? I feel like that would be a really nice little tribute to put that in still as the fight, but Rude and Elena is also very fun. I guess we're just going with Red and Aerith again, because I forgore. I forgot to change. Fun. One of one. Uh... I think they're talking... It's like they're talking to... Reno in like the way that Rude talks. 
Don't be a fool. Open your eyes. Nothing forces us to do their dirty work. What do we get in return? This is so funny. And a one way to get to we're just tools to be used and abused. Okay. Never thought things would come to this. <laughs> the way that they actually have like traitorous dialogue is so funny. Crazy Elena's like actual screams are. No, Call up Avalanche. Obviously. Get him! Try using me! What piece of magic piece we have? It's your turn! My turn! Stay strong, okay? One more shot! I'm close! I'm just gonna keep the body here. Right now, I'm No holding back. Going in. Now it's how. Yes, this is goodbye, partner. <laughs> Try to keep up. All right, they're doing their different stances. I'll show you what I can do. Trying to get you with something specific, brother. Don't overdo it. Ready when you roll. <laughs> 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 I'll take care of them. 
It's your turn. Take it over. Oh, dude, okay. I'm trying to... I'm trying to do my Punisher counter and I just keep getting it wrong. Let's try that again. All right. Take the lead. Keep it together. I'll show you. Why don't you lead the way? Let's do it. Get him! Uh, I'll stop fucking around then. Nothing personal. Sorry, rude. Bam. <laughs> They had a lot of health. Fun fight, though. Mission complete. Well done. You've proven yourselves to be born Turks. Wow, what an honor. We Turks fight as one, but our duty may require us to sever our binding ties. Which is precisely why. <gasps> Who's there? Oh. Personality ID GAI-153. Yes. Affiliation, general affairs, auditing. Oh, Turks. <laughs> Certainly didn't expect to run into you here. Took the words right out of my mouth. What in the hell are you doing here? Shinra sent me to inspect the facilities. Wanted to make sure they didn't have any unauthorized visitors wandering around. GAI-153? Records indicate the individual with that ID underwent formal training. Wait, are you a Turk? Uh, that'll be enough probing. For my benefit, but mainly for yours. It was enough of a pain to cover up the mess you made at the reactor. Try not to cause any more trouble, okay? Sorry. Won't happen again. Anyway, I'm heading back to the village. Once you're done here, I suggest you make tracks. There's definitely more to her than meets the eye. Hello? You good? Hey, Chadley. What happened to the proto-relic? Oh, forgive me. And there. Too busy focusing on promising candidate. Incredible. It appears that by restoring the fragmented data, we were able to break the Proto Relic's encryption. Uh, translation? The potential applications are practically limitless. By converting matter into data distributed across a secure network, shielded from external interference, one could preserve said data indefinitely. So is it real? Like, can I touch it? Oh, of course. Behold, the Proto Relic in its restored glory. Dude, I'm gonna talk about something massive right now. Okay, okay, okay. Let's let's talk about this because this goes this runs deeper than you think. This runs deeper than you think. All right, World Intel complete for Gongaga. Very very nice. Turk's proto relic is ours, and now we have to also witness <laughs> a Gilgamesh cutscene. Uh, we're gonna have a lot to break down in a second. On Sisne, on Chadley, on Gilgamesh, all of them together. <laughs> At long last, the knave returns. Beneath the moonlight, in victory shall I revel, my Genji! Did it do? Did it do? Did it do? Did it do? Interloper! Chadley? <laughs> None other. After analyzing the phenomena associated with your sudden disappearance, I was able to devise a way in which to join you virtually. Virtually? Ah! No matter! Be gone, foul conjurer, or I shall make this place your grave! Oh my! This is simply fascinating! <laughs> I'm Chadley. You must tell me about yourself, and about this place! You dare 
you demand answers of me? Such impudence! <laughs> this is the best Chadley scene. Oh, dude, we're being teased so hard. There you go. We're building up to it. Yes, attack Chadley. I love that Gilgamesh has four arms naturally and then has an extra set of robotic arms. It's kind of funny. Just give him all the arms naturally. <laughs> Incredible scene. Chadley, you okay? I believe so, yes. Tell me, Tell me I didn't dream, dream that shit. That shit. <laughs> Correct, there was no dream cloud. You and I were there together. Wherever there was, that is, I presume it was another dimension. Nothing's ever simple. I sense exasperation. I, however, am emboldened to solve this mystery. I only hope that you will assist me in my quest for answers. Incredible. All right. Proto Relic obtained. That Gilgamesh fight's gonna go crazy. I can't wait. Uh, what we have to talk about in regards to this is very nice. Uh, is Cisne? I didn't think that she would show up in the holograms as much as they keep alluding to her prior affiliation as a member of the Turks. So there you go. But they're like, oh, quick, shush! Don't let the secret out. And it's like, is our our group isn't that dumb, right? Like, surely our group is able to look at what just transpired and, you know, be like, oh, damn. And they share no suspicion towards Cisne at all for being a potential, like, spy reporting on our progress or anything like that. Which is funny, considering how we uh, treat Kate Sith like Shinra spy, you know, with what Barrett says to him and stuff. But then, in regards to Cisne... She gets accidentally scanned as a confirmed member of the Turks and hid that information from us, and we just go, oh, well, <laughs> who cares? Uh, but it would have been a cool surprise if Cisne showed up in the holograms. That would have been funny as, like, an actual fight with her um, crisis core weaponry and stuff like that. That's very awesome. Uh, we're going to talk about something major, and this is original game and Dirge of Cerberus spoilers. Uh, and the reason why I'm just doing that with a preface this time is because it's pretty major. So I'm going to just, I'm going to do this. And then after I finish waving my hands, it's safe for you to stop plugging your ears if you don't want to hear it. Uh, original game spoilers. During the end, you fight Hojo in Midgar in the Sister Ray. He does his transformations. I'm so very much looking forward to that fight. That encounter is going to be crazy. Uh, and then what you learn in Dirge of Cerberus is that um, Vincent goes up to search for survivors with Yuffie that explains their sort of absence from the final cutscenes by being secret characters as they were actually helping to evacuate Midgar. And Vincent goes up to the sister egg because he scans a life form. You see Hojo's body like over the computer and then lightning strikes and then he looks and it's gone. But you see like this upload in progress thing, right? And what we learn in Dirge of Cerberus is Hojo uploaded himself into the network to still persevere, to survive, to try and... And then that's when we go through deep ground with Vice and that's sort of like the connected as well with the same thing and you have to defeat Hojo in, in his weird ways in that game as well. Uh, and we know that Vice exists in this continuity because we have him showing up as like the super boss in the intermission DLC and he's a hologram there, but Chadley is learning this information about like holograms that can be made to become real. He is rebelling against Shinra but he's also a creation of Hojo. And I think that there is still an element of Chadley that is still tied to Shinra or maybe Hojo's even learning what Chadley is learning by proxy. Just the fact that they're associated. Uh, Hojo might be able to observe Chadley's uh, research in that sense, which may explain and allow this whole Hojo digitizing himself or like, you know, that sort of plot line, it has weight to it. Like Chadley's fascination with that sort of process and how he talks about 
you know, data being able to become like a physical object, uh, vice versa sort of thing, like having that as storage, it immediately made me think of that with with Hojo. Uh, so that is, that's pretty major, that's pretty big. All right, I'm waving my hands now, which means I'm stopping talking about massive implications. Uh, and I thought that when we saw the glitching for the first time here, we were gonna actually have Gilgamesh appear because he's associated with proto relic quests. Uh, we still need to go back to the sand giant eventually once we do the kid G stuff. But very, very fun indeed. Cisne showing up instead of Gilgamesh was uh, was neat. And now, with all of that out of the way, uh, we find ourselves ready to proceed to the airstrip. So we're we're now finished with the Gongaga World Intel. It's time to leave the jungle and see what awaits us in the Cosmo region. Cosmo Canyon's just around from here. Gaga airstrip. Well, looks like we found the airstrip. Or what's left of it. Yeah, it's definitely seen better days. You can say that again. It's more crater than runway. Are you kidding me? Are we here for nothing? Maybe not. See that? Oh, or a public telephone booth, eh? What a wee look. Okay. We go, hello? Anyone out here? We have a lot of crate opportunities here. Do I even get anything out of it or are they all going to be empty? There's no way they're all empty, right guys? Okay, we got a high potion. Okay. Send up smoke and we'll be right with you, folks. Bronco Airlines. Seriously? Guess so. So, find anything? Yeah, we gotta send up smoke. Like, with a fire? Wait, you've never heard of smoke signals? Wow, what do they teach you in Midgar? Enough. <laughs> well, leave it to someone who knows more than just enough. Dude, this is crazy. This is taking too long. But I can speed things up. <laughs> Come to me, airplane. Follow the smoke. Come to, Come me. to me, airplane. airplane. Follow, Follow the smoke. The smoke. Huh? Huh? What? Look. <gasps> right on cue. Oh my God! It's act they're actually doing it. Told you I'd speed things up. <laughs> Over here! The music, dude. Huh. Bravo, sir! It looks amazing. Oh, my God. Dude! <laughs> Where to, folks? Since the canyon, please. Uh, you talk? The hell kind of magic trick is this? <clears throat> uh, not that I ain't seen crazier shit on my travels. Now, how many of you we got? Uh, too many. <sighs> but the old girl likes a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> With hazard pay, I'd say this is fair. <laughs> and since I don't have much else going on, I'll be here scratching my ass till y'all pony up. Imagine not having a thousand gil on you right now. Pay the pilot's fee. Dude, this is just so incredible. Let's go. I love this choice. This is so clever, because I'm like, I'm just thinking that, you know, this is not going to happen. I'm like, OK, we got airstrip stuff. That's going to be stuff for like later on, maybe, you know, and it's probably going to be some 
random guy that like flies you over as part of the story. Sid Highwind shows up. <laughs> I love that they have pulled this forward and we're actually seeing the tiny Bronco in action. And it's actually like an airway service that he's got going on. Like, that's so clever. That makes me so happy. I was like, maybe, maybe it's just a tease and maybe you put up the smoke signal and nobody comes and maybe somebody else comes instead. I'm like, surely, are they gonna do it? The way that we've got a little variation of his theme right now playing as well. My God. You take your thousand gills, sir. Let's fly. You never get to really get the Bronco flight in the original. So this is amazing that it's a an airline and you can actually get to some places before later on in the game. Much obliged. Hop on board and sit where I tell you. Gotta make sure my baby's balanced just so. <laughs> Blown away by that. Hold on tight now, you hear? Fall out and you're on your own. Claws. Claws. <laughs> Here we go. This music coming in, dude. Very bumpy airway. We're flying! No shit, kid. Who do you think I am? I don't know. Who? President and pilot of Bronco Airlines, Sid Highwind. Pleasure having you aboard. Dude, it's such a perfect way to introduce a character of Sid. I must admit, I didn't expect to find a willing participant. <laughs> you are truly a model soldier, my boy. Oh. I'd hold still if I were you. We wouldn't want any complications. No, Professor. <laughs> Since you're so committed, I'm going to give you a special treatment. One that will surely make you into a hero. Oh, we're about to get serious, Roche. This would have taken years, but now, now it takes a mere 18 hours. All thanks to me and my singular genius. I stand at the forefront of science, my brilliance a guiding light! Huh. Of course, we pioneers must be ready to do what others are not. Though even I wouldn't dare attempt to improve upon perfection. <laughs> Roche getting an upgrade, dude. That's crazy. Hojo mad as ever. Alright. Well, we know we're seeing Roche again. Oh, look at this, dude. I love how it shows they all fit in there. No, no, uh -oh. I can control it. Thought maybe planes would be okay, but no. Not in here. Open a window. Hey. Yuffie, we're waiting for that. Yeah. You're not worried about flying around in the open like this? What if Shinra sees us? Shinra don't own the skies. Shitheads couldn't stop me even if they tried. <laughs> Look over there. And me are gonna get along just fine. We're getting pretty close now. Yep, 
Bringing her down. Whoa, look at all of that. Dude, I'm looking at just a bunch of rock, but this is so incredible. We're actually able to, like, look around while the Bronco flies. And there's the completion of chapter nine as we go onto the Cosmo runway. <laughs> Watcher of the Veil, okay, chapter folks, 10. We're here. Brought you as far as I could. Hope y'all don't mind walking, cause now you're on your own. What about the next time we need a lift? Hmm. Send up a signal. Just make sure I got room to land. Happy trails to you. I cannot even express how much I absolutely love and adore this. This is such a good idea. The veil's this way. <laughs> Bravo. There are some things, right? There are some things where you go, oh, they're bringing stuff in too early and I'm not sure how I feel about it. And then there are elements like this where you just look at that and you're like, genius. Like, it's such a good way to do it. Because then we get to experience more Sid. Especially in this game. Inspect the telephone booth at an airstrip to send up a smoke signal and call upon the tiny Bronco. After alighting, the pilot will happily fly you to any airstrip you have visited before for the right price, of course. That right price will be a thousand gil for your inaugural trip and 30, uh, 300 gil for subsequent flights. So you can see we've got a, quite a few airstrips and there's even one over towards Junon Way. And then we'll get him to fly us to Junon and he'll be like, there's my baby, the hot wind. Oh, this is such a great introduction because when we naturally see and meet Sid later on, I feel like that introduction, uh, it all is a little bit wild. It's going to be cool to actually properly meet Sid as a character outside of the airlines when we get to that point in the story. Bahamut Arisen. Okay, new summon entities available in the combat system. Which reminds me, before we uh, <laughs> before we venture out of the Gongaga region, we were supposed to be tackling our Kujata summon, so we'll definitely do that with Chadley as well. And here's the Cosmo region. That world map's coming together. <laughs> My god. Cosmo Canyon. What a treat for it to not be just a full cutscene, but you can also like control the camera for a bit to see how you get around this place. So we've got a brand new area of world intel once again together. This area seems a little more condensed, but I don't know how this rocky region is going to be. I also don't know why this is showing us explored. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. That's one way to put such a smile on my face. Shall we go back to uh, Junon with uh, Sid right away? <laughs> So if we open this, we can see where we want to go back to? Or do we summon him first? Yeah. Him to fly. There he is. Okay. So we can go all the way back to the grasslands as well, to Bill's Ranch, Gabe's Ranch, under Junon. So you don't go to the top of Junon. That's interesting. Where do we even land then? Do we land in the water? I just want to see where he goes. I was hoping that he'd land on the top and he might have said it something Hold about on tight. the the airship. So 
So he comes on in, and then do we fly over the top, or we just oh we just appear? Oh damn! Okay, that's so wild. Right. All right, it's time. Let's venture into the Cosmo Canyon region. This might just be one of my most anticipated, if not my most anticipated section of this part of the game. Uh, at least, like in Rebirth specifically. Okay. We're beginning to see some wind things with some ramps. I'm seeing our uh, our regional chocobo thing, our gimmick for the chocobo of this region. Oh dude, it's the penguins. They just they're just angry penguins to me. <laughs> ski ski! Uh, my brain will not let them be anything but just angry penguins. Incredible. Deal with that. This music, dude. Like, new version of the world map theme once again. The ski ski are avian creatures that nest in arid environments, highly combative. They boldly threaten anyone and anything that opposes them, flying out of control once angered. Evading Fury Bomber will pressure them. Okay. Yeah, look at these things. Look at these angry looking penguins. God damn, what a great design. Even keeping the symbols on the chest and everything. That's perfectly translated over. Amazing stuff. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, dude. Oh, I'm not gonna cry at just the sight of it. Dude, I'm gonna. <laughs> oh, whoa. Whoa, the emotional surge of Cosmo Canyon. My dear lord. Uh, it's, I, just, I love Cosmo Canyon so much. Oh man, they got. Dude, the fact that they kept the Sahagan but have actually adjusted them to the region so they're desert versions instead of just being like, what the hell are they doing out here? <laughs> instead of hanging out in the sewers, you know? They actually have, like, regional variants. Land-dwelling creatures that abide in arid environments, they are intelligent enough to have created their own language and quench their thirst solely through the moisture contained in the plants and bugs they eat. That's so sick. They got that dragoon jump. Alright, hold on. Look at that! That's so sick. There's just such an incredible amount of uh, work that's been put into the designs across the board because it's it's not just taking it's not just taking the previous designs and going oh yeah cool that's fine like it's also recontextualizing them completely as well. Let's do this. It's like, yeah, let's just take this design and one-to-one -one adapt it. They're like, let's add some context to the region that it's in. There's more to do with the with the design here. I can't be shedding tears over Cosmo Canyon before the story's even played out here because that's that's ridiculous. I gotta. Hold my tears in for when the story actually happens. Uh, it was hard enough not to shed tears during Dine and Barrett's story, you know? The way that they took something that is great on its own, but that added just even more emotional weight and depth to the characters and their friendships and relationships. My god, man. Oh, we've got a Chocobo Ranch out here. Great. Look! A Chocobo Ranch! The fact that, like, the Chocobo theme is, like, exists within the universe that characters sing it. Same with, like, the Victory theme. Same with Kat, uh, Kate Sith's theme. Like, 
He sings his own music. Like, it's just great. Shani? That you? Yep, it's Who's me, Shani? Shani. One of your chocobos? Did they run away from home? <laughs> My apologies. I don't believe we've met. I'm Kamaria, the owner. <laughs> so, Shani's your bird? Goodness, no. Shani's my daughter. She's a chocobo jackie, or was, till she fell off her mount during the race. <sighs> Since then, she's completely lost her nerve. Refuses to get back in the saddle. I see. Oh! Tell me, you kids any good at riding? Yeah, we dabble. Wonderful! <laughs> in that case, how would you like to use my training course? I had everything built brand new just for Shawnee, but now it's going to waste. Someone ought to put it to good use, don't you think? And who better than you young go-getters? I don't know. Ever run a ring course? It's simple. You strap yourselves in and fly through a series of hoops. I reckon you won't find a course like mine anywhere else. <laughs> Whoa! That sounds amazing! <laughs> You want to try it, right? Imagine how jealous everyone will be. Sure. But first, you'll need to catch yourselves a chocobo. One that isn't afraid of heights. A fine bird like Apony ought to do you, though. Go ahead and ride her over to the training course. Twisting paths and bewildering brushlands. She'll guide you through it all with ease. Okay. We haven't had to wrangle a chocobo in a little while. I like that it is still a thing. Like, if you had to do it in every region, it would be a little bit tiresome, but I like that they spread it out and give you chocobos in different ways. Because the whole catching a chocobo thing in the original is super fun. There's a lot that you get to do with that. I wonder how they'll handle things with part three. I just have an insane amount of questions for, <laughs> for that. We'll have to unpack that later. Will the world map traversal be the same? Are they gonna like revitalize it? It's just, yeah. A lot of questions. A lot of questions. We got the road warrior bangle here and the snail shell um, um, bangle and bracelet. We'll leave it for now because we'll probably end up being able to craft it with the transmuter chip. We shall see. I see you too have come to do a little avian investigation. While most chocobos run on land, the birds around here are capable of taking to the skies. Flying on chocoback must be quite the thrill. What material have we got here? Ooh, poison and petrify together, bio and quake, nice. Jump materia allows you to leap into the air during battle with jump. After disappearing into the sky for a time, you'll drop down to deal damage. Wow, they're actually giving you the dragoon jump command. That's so awesome. Uh, big fan of that. That's going to be great to use. I wonder what that could even be paired with as well for to maximize that. And then skill master, awesome. Allow the ally to follow the leader's attack command with an attack from a linked materia. That's very good. That's fun as well. Okay. Big fan of that. Uh, we're gonna get the other materias here, of course. Maximize that. So we can actually use Petrify now. So Quake looks like it does damage, but can also turn enemies to stone. Limit Siphon and Synergy Support. Yes. I look forward to seeing what new discoveries you make in your travels. Before we push too far ahead as well, uh, <laughs> we do have the combat simulator where Chadley is like, Hey man, you can fight Bahamut Arisen if you want. Uh, but we are a little bit behind. We need to take on the previous entity, Kujata, from the Gongaga region. Very excited for this one. So we did all the crystals. And then I'm going to have to take on this because we can get a second elemental material there. Very, very good. I would definitely be on to that. Bahamut Arisen. Crimson Armored God of Destruction. 
and the great beast who holds sway over the natural world. All right, let's take it on. Full might. Uh, we're gonna do Cloud, Yuffie, and Kate Sith for this one. My team. Let's see how we do. What a great looking beast. It's earrings as well. Okay. Off to a good start. Never again. Okay. You wouldn't beat up a poor cat, would you? Alright, let's see how we start this fight. A ferocious summon recreated in virtual reality, the gargantuan manifestation of nature itself, this guardian of the forest can freely manipulate its elemental affinity. Oh, so it'll actually change. It's currently weak to fire. It switches between fire, ice, and lightning alignments. Dealing a certain amount of damage by exploiting the weakness will pressure it and remove the affinity. If left unchecked, it will spawn a new elemental being. Once it attunes to all three elements, it will unleash tri disaster. So it says if left unchecked, so I guess you can prevent that. Um, okay. Oh, it's just switched to. Oh, it's literally just switched to ice. So now we need to get some fire on this bad boy stat. God, I need to block those charges because ducking away from this is not working. There you go, there's the pressure. So it's currently got no weaknesses. Okay, it's now changed the thunder affinity. There's the stagger. Keep it up, Damn, dude, we've done like not even a quarter. Crazy. Dude, <laughs> dude, the Moogle wielding the Buster Sword is so crazy. That did not do that much. That's uh, whoo. That's a that's stressful right there. It's now fire. Deal with that. It's unplanned. 
get Yuffie to summon Alexander. We've never seen it before. There's a giant fireball coming right for me. Okay. We're all very weak right now. there. Okay. Oh god, well, okay. I tried to see how I could get Soothing Breeze to benefit my party there, but... Okay. The Moogle still fights even when Kate Sith is out. That's crazy. multiple charges there. Well, I'm definitely not getting this done this time. But now that I know that it's actually not going to... that it switches affinities instead of being immune to all elements, that'll be fun. Okay, so... I need to get to two ATB bars to actually get what I want. Okay, so I can get a rise. Okay, it sits back. Okay, I can get a rise on Yuffie. Okay, I can get Cure on Cloud. We're staggering. Okay. The fact that we're still in this is fucking crazy, actually. I managed to get the Arise off. I've, I think realizing that it was uh, not an automatic thing for the Phoenix to do and you have to actually manually do it makes the most sense ever. Okay, um... Okay, Phoenix is doing its Rebirth Flame. It served us well, it got two Arises. Definitely needed to give Yuffie a, a bit more to do MP-wise, because she's only got Thunder and that's it, sadly. Okay. Try disaster is here. Okay. Um, I don't know where to go, but we're probably all fucked. <laughs> Dude, holy crap. Oh, he's doing his limit break. He's doing the actual summon animation. Okay. We got reprieve. Alright, Yuffie. Go do your limit break. Do go do your limit break, Yuffie. <laughs> I, I can't do anything else because my summon is gone, but that is, um, that's amazing. There you go. 
<laughs> Look at our health. We got Kujata to such a state. Yeah, we got Kajata to under halfway, which is pretty good. Now we'll solo with Yuffie, of course. I can't move. Yeah, <laughs> like I could, you can't, you can't cancel. I can't cancel the ability. I still can't move. I'm stunned. This is so funny. I'm like, I'll just soothing breeze, and maybe I can like duck out of it to cancel it early. No, you're stuck there. All right, so that was Kajata. Um, I'm gonna need to rearrange my materia for that one. Let's go another round, shall we? Let us take on the beast. Okay. So he, he basically, I wonder if you're able to, I don't know if it, the way that he summons the, the thing to charge into it like that, I'm like, can you stop that? I'm not sure if you can stop it. Is he immune to, yeah, I think he's immune to being slowed, sadly. That's not awesome. We're now in this one. Oh, my God. 
limit siphon is pretty sick. We're testing that out. Hang back. Can't use items. We've got prey, baby. Go, Moogle, go. I think that's not doing a lot of damage. In fact, it did basically nothing. Ow. Okay. That's certainly something. That's different. That's not what I thought you were going to do. You're up. of a time for the ice to run out. Dude, plasma discharge is so good. Putting that on Cloud instead of Yuffie was the right move. Now, arrow, and we've got try disaster. So, um, yeah, it's happening. Try disaster's being built up, and we've just got to let it happen. Let's see who gets killed. Hopefully, I can get some arise happening with Phoenix pretty quick. But I think if Cloud dies, yeah, if Cloud dies, Phoenix is gonna auto go. Yeah, okay, damn it. Phoenix went automatically, and I was just about to use the two ATB commands to get my Arise off. I gave Cloud... No, Yuffie has the raised materia, so we're okay. Um, okay. Stop. All right, hang on. We're still in. Just a little bit slower than we were before. I just gotta get two ATB charges with Yuffie, and I can pray. So we're back. Ow. Not over yet. Almost got everyone on limit breaks too, which is very good. Because we're almost at stagger, so we can go for a triple. There's the stagger. Okay, we'll have kind of do extension. That. Unfortunately, let's dance, asshole. Kate Sith does not get his limit break off this time. We're under halfway. Oh, 
Bad dodge timing, I guess. Unfortunately. Let me just get the assess off before I forget. to fire now. Nope. Every time I think I'm getting a specific type of ability, that's not what I was going for. There's a mega magic lob box. Fuck it, let's just use it now. What's inside? Oh, what's inside? A full stagger. Okay, cloud. Second try. Those uh, clutch raises, though, Phoenix uh, almost messed up the whole thing, but that's okay. Eight minutes, dude. <laughs> it's a good fight, though. We didn't get tried as after a second time, so lucky for us. To think that anyone could tame a beast of so many affinities. I cannot say where this wild steed might lead you, but I encourage you to find out. Very nice we'll indeed. Okay. Just a little bit of a materia shift around. We're going to have to really get to see some of these because I haven't seen Alexandra and Kujata in action yet. So I'm going to switch to Kujata. That'd be fun. I'll have to mess around just in combat so against uh, some regular enemies soon. Perhaps the chocobos here developed the ability to. I got to go get these other materias and then we will push on.
Ooh, it's so cool to see new enemies now again. We got the Basilisk. Yeah, a lot of assessing our enemies. The Basilisk are elusive creatures that abide in arid environments. They can change their color to blend into the scenery, evading enemy attacks as they stealthily sneak closer. So basically chameleons, but they're called Basilisks. It's cool to see them disappear. <laughs> and if you exploit their elemental weakness, they cannot hide! You're done, now you're in for it. Nothing like doing cross slash on nothing. New region, new little baby chocobo. <laughs> I love how happy they are to see the fast travel point be repaired. Just watching with happiness as it being repaired and then celebrating it. Let's go catch ourselves a chocobo. It's another stealth encounter, okay. So it's the same as it was in Junon, okay. Good bird. Chocobo wrangled. And lucky for you all, it took you no waiting time whatsoever to wrangle Easy this girl. one. We got you. One of my one of my only gripes with the game at this point is like the game has so much content and that is amazing that's the good news there's so much to do and it's always almost fun you know there's uh, just occasionally something that takes it down a little bit and then in the case of this game and how it's doing the open world there's so much stuff to do and that's great it's just most of the activities take so long and it's a lot longer than they need to be, you know? And it adds up. On its own, it's not too much of an issue, but it really does add up. And I just, you feel that whenever you're met with like a, all right, you wanna like, you're in Cosmo Canyon, yay, that's so exciting. You wanna explore, you gotta get a chocobo and then the momentum is just killed because you've gotta slowly push a cart and throw a rock and pull a lever for, you know, for minutes at a time. And that on, like I said, that on its own is fine, but it adds up because it's most activities and it's like the game is already really quite long. Like there's still so much left, which is very exciting. It's just, you get to a activity and you kind of go, oh boy, you know, <laughs> have to take a deep breath as I prepare to stand here and do this for a while when you just want to keep it keep it moving. The momentum gets killed a bit, sadly. However, we now do have the soaring chocobo, which is amazing. We have the ability to glide around. The birds of the Vale are fearless and can leap from certain ledges to fly across regions steep chasms, while on Chocoback take flight from gliding ranges marked with that symbol and ride the generator's air currents to access hard to reach locations. I wonder how easy this is going to be. You don't get sick on Chocobac. Amazing, isn't it? It's like my Chocobo and I share one mind, one body, one soul. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Maybe my body just hates Shinra cars, trains, and boats. They ought to find a way to make the ride smoother for their stuff. Put R&D to work. Think they got other priorities. That's true. That's pretty funny. It was like, when I'm on Chocobac, everything is okay, actually. We'll go and do this training course and we'll 
we'll see what gliding is like. Got our environmental conditions for Cosmo Canyon, our first intel. Cosmo Canyon is located in the south of the western continent where countless valleys and caverns have formed in the red clay. In ages past, seismic activity forced this soil to the surface where it was later eroded by the surging life stream below, giving the region its unique appearance. Throughout the year, the canyon sees very little rainfall and the temperature variation between the plateaus and gorges is considerable. As such, it is extremely difficult to grow crops and the mere act of survival is a daily struggle. Nevertheless, the canyon is a prime destination for students of planetology. In addition to scholars and devotees, many tourists can also be found here, seeking to take in the mystical air. In more practical terms, the arid conditions and lack of cloud cover facilitate the observation of celestial bodies, making the canyon popular among astronomers. Very good. All right, we've got our training course. Let's get flying, shall we? You always seem to find me, no matter where I go. Aha! Let me guess. You're Shani? Ugh. You were talking with your mom earlier. She said you weren't using the training facility she built. Figured if you're not up for it, then we could give Abony her exercise. <sighs> no, don't! We'll bring her back. All right, it's settled. And Chocobo Whisperer Yuffie gets first dibs! <laughs> Glad de Chocobo. Your goal is to earn points by passing through as many rings as possible before your talons touch the ground. Use Apony's swift vertical mobility to reach high scoring rings while keeping yourself aloft on the current generator's updrafts. Okay. Let's see how we go. We get Yuffie a new weapon for 3600. Which means we gotta do it. This is great! <laughs> Alright. Do it as Yuffie. Oh yeah. Okay. God. Ooh. So you can like dive bomb and then go back up again? Okay. No. Oh no! Okay. Well. Is. Oh! Okay. Quick, go back. Alright, we're going back. Oh, did I miss it? It's already gone. Where is it? Oh, it disappeared! No! Oh, no, wait! I figured out where it was. We're actually above it. Okay, hold on. <laughs> the good news is we're not on a time limit. That's a massive boost. Right, hold on. We got this. So we're gonna go. Do not land on this bridge. And then we're gonna go. Uh, uh, here we go. And then go back over here. No. Oh, hang on. I accidentally went down instead of up because fucking controls. I did all that. I did all that <laughs> just to fuck it up. That's annoying. This is great. Meant to go up, went down. All right, let's go again. Yeah. meant to go up and I went down right at the start. I'm gonna have to get used to that because I, I think my brain is wanting to do it one way. Alright, let us slowly glide down here. And then we see our target. Yep. I can almost never think of a reason for us to dive down. You just slowly fall into place of where you need to be. Was it 3600 we need? Where they get this kind of technology to power these courses? Up. 
They don't use Marco in the Cosmo region, so are these so these got to be solar powered devices here. All right, we've got a bunch of 300s. We're carefully just gliding down. 300, 300, and then two 500s. And that should get us exactly 3,600. Nice. Simple. Simple. And clean. <laughs> it's the way that you're making you know, me feel tonight. I'm racing at the gold saucer. I bet on me. Don't let it go to your head. I could do what you just did in my sleep. Before you start talking big, you gotta at least finish the other regiments first. Competition. Post, huh? Fine. I'll take whatever you throw at me. Head to the next course. Okay, so it's all part of the same quest. Gotcha. Yuffie. The Crescent Sickle. Better magic attack. Uh, shooting star, let the shuriken fly across the battlefield, mowing down all enemies it touches. Very good. Keeps the throwing star aloft even more. Next course is out this way. Oh, we should glide there. Never mind. Why is this one blocked? Why would it let you glide off of this one? Isn't that weird? It's like weirdly restrictive. I'm like, how dare you glide from there, you silly idiot? It's like, all right. I'll go fuck myself then. Hey, Shawnee. Just so you know, if you really want to ride after me, that's cool with me. I'm done with riding. Oh. Hmm. Apony's been a part of my family for years, ever since I was little. We rode together so much, we could tell what each other was thinking. And we never had a crash. During my last race, I hit another chocobo and fell. As soon as I hit the dirt, I looked up and saw the feet, the claws, coming right at me. Every time I close my eyes, I see them again. I'd like to be alone, okay? Hmm. So that's how it's gonna be. Fine. I'll give poor Apony the exercise she needs. Okay. Time to do our next course. That is just crazy, dude. Okay, damn. Cannot wait. However, we must learn to glide. <laughs> 7200 for a Cosmonite Ore. Well, it's not a weapon this time, so I'm not in a huge hurry. The reward here is less than what it was before. This is great! For more points. Okay, they move now. I let go of the right trigger. If you do that, you fall. They fly now! Oh god, if you just, if you drop that right trigger for just the tiniest amount of time, even if it just like, the slips off, you have fallen. That's uh, Giddy uh yeah. <laughs> I gotta glue my, my finger to the controller. Ugh. 
Uh. All right, we're starting to do drops now. Oh, okay. So I was supposed to like efficiently go down and back up to get a bit of a boost, but we have hit that and fallen. Okay. Not even hitting the target score because we are legendary. So that was a trap. <laughs> Giddy up, girl! Okay. So if we play our cards right, I think we're supposed to like do a cheeky little descend and then pick ourselves back up again. Like this, and then we go up again. There you go. And then I think we're supposed to do the same thing here. Okay, and then we get picked up in the lift, I see. And now we're really high. And then we keep going. And now the okay, you're gonna do this to me. Don't do this to me. Alright, I see what I see what's going on. Uh, yeah, why am I going up? Why didn't I go up? What the fuck? Do it. That's fine, but I stopped going up. Instead of like going down and then getting the pickup, my chocobo just went, all right, let's just go down to the ground. I'm tired. <laughs> not bad, not bad. I mean, we could have done way better, but that'll do. You can't just force a chocobo to do what you want. You should have established a bond with Apony before heading out. You've got to be on the same page when you're running a course. Be completely in sync. You don't say. Then why don't you, a real jockey, show us how it's done? I can't believe you people. I'm going home. Oh, crap. That certainly backfired. Yeah, yeah. No need to rub it in. Come on, let's catch up with her. Okay. Is it third time's the charm on the training course? Let's see. Apony, what are you doing? Why are you still following me? You know I can't ride you anymore. Apony. I'm sorry, but I can't. I just can't. Says who? You just watch. I'm gonna prove to you that there's no other bird that can fly like Apony. I will. Okay. Training course number three, barrier material earrings. That's very nice for 9,600. I'm not missing the 2500 right at the start. I guess you gotta really choose when you wanna start to time this one right. So you can get it right in the middle. And I'm gonna miss them. I'm gonna i I'm gonna miss them. Okay. Uh, 
we're descending and then we're ascending and okay yep very good I think that's because I didn't commit fully to the dive then and I stopped part way through so it genuinely kills all of your momentum when you do that Gotta dive now. And up we go. Very good. And then dive again. And up we go. Okay. Get to this. Wait, I gotta go. Okay. Hang on. Oh no. I was confused for a second. I'm like, wait. Oh, well. Okay. What? Okay. Up we go. Okay. This one. This one. This one. Dive uh, up. Okay, where do I go from here? Oh God, no! That only gets to nine thousand anyway. Fuck. Well, like we didn't get the ninety-six hundred. Well, that's fine. A couple of weird points there. Where we <laughs> missed me? some. I aced it, and it's all thanks to this chocobo happening. The best of the best. Quick. Don't you think I know that? There's something on your mind. Just say it. The day I fell, I just... I got overconfident. Figured I had the race in the bag. I started thinking about all the ways I was going to spend the prize money. I wasn't focused. But when I was rounding the final corner, Apony and I, we got out of sync. Before I knew it, I was in the dirt. Apony jumped in front to try and protect me. And because of that, she got herself hurt. <laughs> so I... I just can't get back in the saddle. I can't. What if I hurt her again? I'd never forgive myself. <laughs> You're up, Mr. Merc. Put those chocobo interpreting skills to work. It was a terrible accident, but we've learned from that experience and can grow as chocobo and rider and strive to not repeat past mistakes. Once we've healed, Shani, let's race together again. You got that? Apony. takes to get back in racing shape. Until then, mind looking after her for me? Uh, you serious? Well, yeah. She still needs exercise, and I won't be able to take her out for a while. I feel better knowing she's in the hands of a rider I can trust. <coughs> I'm sorry for making you worry, Mom. I promise I won't give up. Not again. <sighs> That's all I wanted to hear. Be warned, when I'm healed up, you're going down. <laughs> Bring it on! Very nice. Bonds of Trust completed.
We got some nice levels up. And then we can continue on our journey to be homeward bound, heading into Cosmo Canyon, which is what we're going to be doing next time. Thank you so much for joining me today. This was a great episode as we moved into a brand new region. I'm very, very excited for what's coming up next. A little ways around the, <laughs> the side there. We're going to be heading to Cosmo Canyon, finally. I'm so keen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you next time.